Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to show you guys my first successful Awakener kill and let you guys know that I pretty much have him on farm now. My first Awakener kill was with a level 5 Awakener. Um, let me go ahead and just show you what I'm talking about real fast. So the first thing I want to state as well is before I actually show you the video, I want to let you know what I changed. So I have this tab over here called the Awakener set tab. So I use a Kong Ming stratagem since I don't have a Sapples frame or anything else. And this seems pretty good right now. It's 30% reduced spell damage taken from blinded enemies. Everything's blinded because I'm a sab. And then I have a swap with basically max chaos res. So I got a 30 chaos ring with a 28 chaos res and a 20, another 29 chaos res. I go dual life flask and uh, I use another setup that it doesn't really matter right now. Um, or basically I'm trying to get a coal or lightning exposure on the boss for more damage and the other thing is, is I rolled myself a you cannot be inflicted by corrupted blood jewel which makes the fight significantly better so with that being said let me go ahead and pop this up and get this started so I apologize the, the quality is gonna be a little bit poor that's because I'm doing a basically I'm recording a record or I'm recording a VOD so anyway yeah um, so this will get started. You can see the Pantheon I'm talking about. I also went with the Life Flash Pantheon. I don't really know. There's a 5% reduced chaos damage taken one. That would probably be better, but I just wanted to be on the safe side. So I just went with the Life Flash route. Now, this one doesn't have it, but in my next attempt, well, well next successful kill, I went with uh, Arctic Armor since I didn't really need Herald of Ice for the extra damage. And Arctic Armor ended up helping reducing the damage by a ton. Now, I just want to go over and analyze this fight and kind of tell you guys what I've been learning. So, the first phase of Awakener is actually super, super, super easy. The first phase consists of him at, like, getting him from basically 100 all the way to, well, basically till you kill this version of Awakener. Now, in this fight, um, pretty much what you have to pay attention to is that gigantic thing that should never hit you. You just always move out of it. It's no problem. This guy will constantly do these beams. The beams are really not, as long as you're capped every res, the beams really don't hurt that much. That triple beam is a no-no though. You want to make sure you have really high stun avoidance or basically cannot be stunned because you never want to stand in, in that beam, like the big beam. Um, the regular beams are whatever. So you'll see he has a big windup for it. So that's one thing to note if you're playing melee, right? So I did this whole fight without fortify. Definitely recommend using fortify. Now, after you get him down about 25%, he's going to create this pool. Make sure you move away from him. Now, um, I haven't really looked up too many videos on how to lure these, these things, these gigantic vortexes. So what I decided to do is I took the vortexes to the spot I don't want to fight the boss. Um, so what does that mean? When the boss basically dies in his first phase or, you know, a percent, like 25% of him goes away, the vortex spawns. And I pulled the vortex because it will slowly follow you. Um, over to a spot I don't like. So fuck, I hate that place. It's gotten me killed. Fuck that spot. The stairs are shit. So then to aggro the boss, you need to run underneath him. So after you run underneath him, he's going to talk a bunch of shit. There's this gigantic circle. You fight in the circle. So that was a triple beam. Now, right here, there's going to be like, we'll call it hallway or corridor. When corridor spawns, he's going to constantly shoot these gigantic fireballs, like one left side, one right side, one left side, one right side, one left side, one right side. It's really easy to dodge, but it's kind of funky with the clicking. So my recommendation is when that happens, immediately just dart, like just go right through it. So, you know, if you're an archer, you got blink arrow. If you're a caster, you got flame dash. If you're if you uh, use a shield, you got fucking shield charge, whirling blades, etc. You just zoom right through it. My next biggest tip is always, 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 fucking always have the boss on your screen. Even if you are a ranged build, have the boss on your screen. You can see I'm playing ball lightning. I am right in the boss's face so I can always see what he's doing because that triple laser, you do not want to tank. That is the no-no laser. So... When this happens, he will create a crater on your face. Now, when the crater spawns, there's going to be one area that's red. So you run through the spot that's red and the meteor will fall. If you don't get out, I'm pretty sure it one shots you. There you go again. You can see this is actually me testing my new setup and how tanky I am. And I can take quite a few balls from him. You can see, um, I think right here it is. So I took one, two, three, four, five, six... And then I moved out of the way. And that was, I do not run a mana flask and I can still get much more mana. So this is pretty exciting for me. 
Now, after this, we're just going to... I, I guess there's no reason to zip through. I'll let the fight kind of play. I'll show you everything that happens. That was a triple laser, if you would like to see exactly what happened there. I think I may have been standing on a degen pool. Did I or no? Did I just get fucking lasered to the face? No, that was a triple laser that brought me all the way down to 900 HP. That's why you don't want to tank the laser. The laser is just no. It's no, no. Now, one big cue to note. I don't know if it's in this first form, but in the second form, he will say die. And when he says die, he shoots a laser. You don't want to die from it. So again, after the black hole is created now, our goal is to just move this fucking thing away. It's really difficult. It doesn't always work. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't... This is my least favorite part of this fight is just luring these black holes. I, I don't really understand it. It feels like it's different every time you do it and you're just confused at like which black hole is moving even though you know and then sometimes they don't move and then the boss just like runs literally a map away and you're just like what is happening right now? So this is the most frustrating part for me um, and I'm trying to get consistently better at it. It's just you know it takes a little while to get the boss set up. This part is uh, this part is me being very confused because it's kind of spooky, but you kind of just have to say fuck it and just go. So we went through the top side. I think. I think I just went. Oh, bottom side. Bottom side. Okay. So again, uh, you need to get to the boss, go underneath him to aggro him. Try not to get hit by that too much because it's shit. And this is a really bad scenario. I'm pretty sure you never want these vortexes in the circle, but I guess it moves. Now in second phase, you'll notice that he's half health and there's two rings now. So you run out of two rings. This is also me doing it on a five link and he's awakener level five and I don't have lightning exposure. So the potential for these kills can go way, 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 way up. I intentionally wanted to use like a slower base setup to see if I could out sustain him because I'm trying to get better at PoE, and part of getting better at PoE is not going up to a boss and pressing one, two, three, four, five. It's pressing your flash six, like situationally, and I'm kind of brain dead because of mapping. It's just one, two, three, four, five. Mr. Streamer, do you use a flash macro? So you know you really have to like separate your brain function when you play PoE for bossing. I'm gonna speed through this. There's nothing special here. Actually, wait, is it, does he go up again? No, no, he doesn't go up again, right? He goes up at zero. Oh no, he does go up again. Okay, yeah, so he goes up again, which remember, whenever he goes up, you move away because he creates a black hole. So, I would skip this part, but I feel like everybody wants to see this part because this part is just shit. So I'll just let you guys see what's happening. So I'm, my goal right now is to just pull the vortexes out of the middle and then go and fight the boss. But, you know, vortexes. Yeah, vortexes. So I was really terrified because I was like, this is like the worst position I could possibly fight anything in. And I tried to initiate the fight, but I don't know what happened. So now that I'm, I've never actually watched this. So it's kind of interesting. I don't know if I triggered the, I did. So I triggered the fight and it looks like it pushes. It's interesting. So it looks like it pushes the black holes out of the area. So I don't know if the goal would be to just fight him, like just force trigger it and the black holes move out. So this is, this is when the boss is fully pissed off. I would just like to go back and start again and show. So when the boss is fully triggered, uh, he gets really mad. So you can see this is a triple crater, right? So you get a you boom out of the crater, no problem. He will then do this part where he splits and he does that. Immediately after that usually comes a die, I think. Or let me see, maybe it's after this one, here we go. So you see there's a mirror image with that. So let's talk about this really fast and what's happening. So if I go back all the way here, let me skip this crater part. He will put this spinny thing in the middle, and this is why you want a cannot be inflicted by corrupted blood jewel, because that will prevent you from getting 10 stacks from there. If you stand on a degen pool, all of your regen is cut. You have no regen at all, and you are shocked. I'm pretty sure that's what that debuff is. 
So he'll do this split and he'll create a bunch of these dudes. And then they will fire a die at you, which is that's a die basically. We're able to tank it, which is pretty cool. You just have to make sure you hit a life flask after. Oftentimes the boss will follow up with a die right away. So be careful for that quick combo. And then again, remember, what is the goal? Get the boss on your screen. Find the boss, get to the boss. Keep him on your screen. He will do his little baby laser. Honestly, the baby laser is not that bad. The baby laser, like most builds, can probably tank, uh, which is pretty much that laser right there. Could be wrong. Maybe you can't tank it. Apologies, disclaimer. I know I was shit there, but I made it out in time. Be very careful of the degen. So here's a split. This is when he does the kamikaze in the middle. Just don't be in the middle. Again, this is the die, so run, get ready, and boom. And then remember, boss might do it again right after. Find the boss. There you go. And stick on the boss. And this is pretty much it. It's pretty much rinse and repeat. He does the corridor, you run through. Careful of the degen pools. If you stand on a degen pool and you take the laser, it is almost most certain that you die unless you're playing a very tanky character. This is the boom boom. I don't know if you can damage during that phase. This is again when he does the split. Also, I would say a big killer could potentially be if you're on a degen pool in the corridor, you could get fucked. I also wonder how much free time I have to damage during there because it looks like, it almost looks like the longer you stay in it, it like gives you a grace period. Of, uh, like, I don't know, it's strange. Oh, I see. The dudes come together to create the, that spinny thing. I'm an idiot. I never even noticed that. I thought they were like doing something weird, but nope. I also wonder if it's better for me to stay in the hallway phase and just kind of tank the balls and just damage him rather than immediately because it looks like it looks like the boss phases a lot quicker when uh, when you like finish his his skills or so I don't know how to explain it like when he puts the hallway down and you run past it it looks like he immediately stops but if you stay in it he'll keep shooting you same thing with this like here immediately boom and he stops only after two. So I, I really feel like it might be better to just stay in there and damage him. Okay, so that was where I made my mistake. My mistake here was getting shocked, which I'm pretty sure even as a sab, you are shocked. It's kind of fucked because if you look here, look how much more damage I take from this blast. I mean, maybe not. Maybe it's just because I couldn't regen. And then the second one killed me and he still had a third one and he still had a fourth one just to make sure that you are not coming back. So that is like number one, do not get caught on a degen pool because if you get caught on a degen pool, you can potentially just get ass blasted because of the shock multiplier. And again, Saboteur has immunity to shock. It's not unaffected, it says immunity. So I'm not really sure if that's supposed to be a thing. Um, so this part's also kind of really weird you just kind of have to figure out exactly where he is usually you have to just bolt it and run the top side or the bottom side i've never actually died from there and then you get in and you fight him again and of course he's gonna be a douchebag the awesome thing is this character can be like considerably more tanky i could definitely if I was in Trade League, I could definitely get like another 800 HP and I could get like double mono regen. Um, and then I could allocate. So this doesn't have crystal skin allocated. So you could allocate crystal skin. You can utilize shield charge with fortify if you wanted to. There's like a lot of really cool things you could do to make this character more tanky. But the thing is, is you're already trying to throw so many mines. So I'm trying to just you know, not focus on doing too many different things. Sometimes when you focus on too many different things while you're trying to learn a fight, you really just end up getting yourself killed because you position yourself incorrectly or something. Honestly, if I triple balance my res, Wise Oak is fantastic as well. Now that I think about it, because it does three elements. Well, supposedly it does every element plus chaos is what we're aware of, but I don't know 100% what is the most accurate 
for sure, capping Chaos Res was the number one strongest thing I could do. I know Ons is a very good option too because it's plus three max res. Uh, that would slow down the degen a lot um, and would help a lot. I don't know. See, I'm really I'm really confused as to how good Kong, or Kong Ming's Spirit Shield actually is. But it seems like I can tank really well. So I'm definitely going to have to try a fight without using the shield. But it seems super good. It doesn't look like the beam does that much either, honestly. I don't even know if it's worth me trying to dodge the beam. Unless the beam shocks you as you go through, but I really don't think so. It's just really don't stand on degen. Everything is manageable as long as you don't stand on a degen. <laughs> that seems to be the number one thing in this fight. It's, which is kind of hard to see the floor with fucking ball lightning, which kind of sucks, but what can you do, right? See, look, that was a full-on tanked beam. No, I, I wonder if... Did I did I get any spell dodge there? Let's see. Let me just see. One more, one more. Okay, let me go back one more time. I'm pretty sure it tanked... Let's see. Right here. So that's one hit, second hit comes out, third hit comes out, fourth hit comes out, and then fifth hit, oh god, what um, what just happened? I don't think he's targetable during that, actually. It looks like Ball Lightning wasn't targeting him. And definitely get yourself some Calling Strike, because it will it will help you a lot. So that's pretty much what I've learned from that fight. Uh, that highlight is up, so you can definitely go see it. That was also without a Castwind Damage Taken Steel Skin. I'm really curious like how much more that would save me, because it seems like I can honestly face tank most of these mechanics. I just got to get more sustain. But I'm going to catch you guys later. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. And I'll see you guys tomorrow on the next POE stream. Have a good one.